Hello everyone, it's Jamal Thomas. Welcome to the Progressive Soapbox. So guys, first I want to thank all my subscribers, patrons, all the people who donate, all the people who like the videos. Um, yeah, you guys are immensely important, so thank you very much. That's the first point. The second point is, this recently came out. At the very least, Washington Post just reported it. Um, I wanted to show it because I thought it was awesome, and I kind of want to make a point behind it. I've made a point in an earlier video on this, but this was when I first started. So this is somewhat of a replication of that video. A little bit better, more enhancements and more comfortable hosts. This came out today. Russian troll farm, 13 suspects indicted for interference in US election. <gasps> what? There were trolls? You mean Vladimir Putin and other governments engage in, you know, Fucking around with, with the way people um, vote in a particular country? It, do you honestly believe that the United States does not engage in, in pushing other elections or pushing people in other elections or having people who were here and then move into another country and then run in some, le some level of election, allowing a certain control and influence in those governments? You honestly, I guess my point this, to this is, this is not mind blowing. This is not mind blowing to me. It doesn't shock me at all to see that that the think that Vladimir Putin would prefer Donald Trump over Hillary Clinton. One person was talking about a nuclear goddamn war. So even if the standpoint is this kind of conciliatory thing, okay, I can I can see it. That doesn't blow me away. It's a secondary question, and the point was always: A, you haven't proven that Russia did this. I mean, these are troll farms, but. Do these troll farms belong to Vladimir Putin? We don't know, but assume for the moment that they do. We engage in this type of behavior. I don't understand the hair on fire approach to this. It's selective justice. But for the sake of argument, say they are Vladimir Putin's handpicked trolls that go out there and fuck around with the elections. The, the secondary question on that becomes, do we need to be hysterical? That's the first point. Second point, do we have any just cause to be hysterical? Seeing as we do the same thing in other countries, wouldn't the same case or course of action to be, let's just make sure that our elections are, you know, secure and the, the people and everything else. And, but, but before we do that, we have to ask a third question. What impact? What impact? What's the point of being hysterical over something that had zero or too little impact in what was taking place? Now, I sat here with my friend the other day screaming at the top of his lungs that Russia had all of this influence in the election because they were buying Facebook and Twitter posts. This is stupid. This is stupid. And in the article itself, even though Russia, 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 the true bare bones reality of this is this line. And I'm going to let Greenwald say it. Come on, pop up. In an indictment announced on Friday in Washington, Mueller described years-long multi-million dollar conspiracy by hundreds of Russians aimed at criticizing Hillary Clinton and supporting Bernie Sanders and Trump. Mueller charged 13 nationals and three Russians, Russian entities and accused them of defrauding the United States government by interfering with the political process. Well, this is interesting. How did they do that? Let's explain that part. Prosecutors provided a remarkable detailed picture of how Russia used social media, fake rallies, and selective operatives in the United States to create political intensity by backing radical groups, opposition, social movements, and disinfected voters. The outreach from the Russians included direct contact with over 100 Americans. Wow, a whole 100 Americans out of a 300 million country. Yeah, that's great. This information warfare by Russians didn't affect the outcome of the presidential election. Deputy Attorney General Rod Rodstein told reporters, Trump and his Republican supporters have repeatedly denounced Mueller's investigation as a witch hunt and have denied any collusion, but the indictment cites no instances of Russia coordinating directly with the Trump campaign. Understand what's being said. They found a bunch of Russians who was dicking around by using like Twitter and Facebook ads. They would have these fake rallies. But but understand, this is not any different than what the United States does around the globe. I'm just making this point that how, where is the outrage? 
Where is the legitimacy for the outrage? And it seems mightily selective. I wasn't aware that it was Vladimir Putin's fault for slavery. That Vladimir Putin said, murder all of the Native Americans. And on top of that genocide, steal land from Mexico. And yeah, we need somebody to till the land. So let's get those darkies. And we're going to force them to do this for multiple years. And when we let them out, we're just going to call them free slaves. And we're going to create a ripple that had reverberated in our society all the way up to now. I didn't know that Vladimir Putin did that. I didn't know that Vladimir Putin cheated Bernie Sanders. I didn't know that these were things that Vladimir Putin did. I didn't know that Vladimir Putin told Hillary Clinton not to go to Wisconsin. I did not realize that. There are a lot of things that's being attributed to Vladimir Putin. I didn't know that Putin completely hollowed out America Enterprise, meaning America's um, infrastructure. So you have this situation where they're sending jobs overseas. I was not aware that Vladimir Putin was responsible for sending jobs overseas for, for, for people in this country. I did not know that it was Vladimir Putin's fault that wages were stagnant for the past 30 years while wages for the top 1% spiked. Nobody told me that that was Vladimir Putin's. Or maybe that was just the natural condition that America was in based upon the people in this country. The information warfare by Russians didn't affect the outcome of the presidential election, Deputy Attorney General Rod Rothstein told reporters. Even if what you say is true, it had zero impact. It had zero impact. Put a fine point on it. Let's not take Rod Rothstein's um, position on this. I mean, hell, he's just the guy who's doing the fake investigations of Donald Trump. I think it's a witch hunt. So, yeah, I'm calling it a fake investigation. I think the investigation is real. Don't get me wrong. If they can find someone on Trump, Lord knows they're going to find something on Trump. But there is no link. It makes no sense to have a link. Understand why on earth would Vladimir Putin need to contact Donald Trump to tell him, hey, guys, I'm going to I'm going to make it easier for you to win by sending a bunch of people to do Facebook and Twitter ads. You do. Do you understand that Hillary Clinton? Paid a million dollars for Twitter trolls. She couldn't find enough people to back her position. So she paid a million people or a million dollars for people to back Twitter trolls. It's essentially, to people be assholes on Twitter to bash Bernie Sanders. This is just fucking amazing. Let, let's, I need to be quick with this because. Fake news, wide reach, but little impact, study says. That's the New York Times. New York Times is reciting a study saying, hey, the fake news, you know, people might have seen stuff on Twitter and Facebook, but they really didn't necessarily believe it. It didn't really have an impact, particularly when you compare it to actual campaign commercials. That's New York Times. You don't want to take the New York Times word for it. What about Stanford? Stanford study examines fake news in the 2016 presidential election. I did this study early on, and at the end of the day, they say, look, yes, fake news was prevalent, but at the, it couldn't compete with campaign ads, rallies, seeing the candidates, giving interviews and everything else. It gets drowned out. It did not have impact. Shut up about the impact in Russian meddling. If what you're saying is true, that Russia put a bunch of Twitter and Facebook ads, these guys are telling you that the impact was nil. Rod Ronstein. The impact was nil. The impact was nil. So even if what you say is true, at best, what you're telling me is Russia did with we did the same thing that the United States does around the world. And in doing the same thing that the United States around the world, they were comically inept at it to where it didn't have an impact. In one study after the next, it didn't have an impact. And the FBI themselves are looking at this. Didn't look like this had an impact. Didn't look like this had an impact. You know what did have an impact? It wasn't the fake news. It was the actual quote unquote news. You gave Trump billions of dollars in free advertisement, showing his empty podium. Mind you, an empty goddamn podium as opposed to a Bernie Sanders rally. Like I'm making the point that the amount of press that you've lavished on him and you didn't do it for no reason. You did it because it was profitable. This is CNN's 
International Chief says Trump is good for business. It's a glib thing to say, but our performance has been enhanced during the news period and how we've chosen to cover it, said ex-executive Terry Maddox. As Donald Trump lashes out once more at the media on Twitter on Wednesday, the head of CNN International said that the president's repeated attacks hadn't done any lasting damage. If you look at the groups that Trump has primarily targeted, CNN, The New York Times, Washington Post, Saturday Night Live, Stephen Colbert, every single one of them has seen quite a remarkable growth in their viewing figures and their sales figures, said Tony Maddox, speaking at the Edinburgh TV Festival. I think being called out for fake news by Trump isn't necessarily the end of the world. In fact, evidence which suggests as far as media organizations are concerned, it's not something to worry about. Here's another guy who's being honest. Uh, close. CBS Trump, Trump's success is damn good for the network. I'm trying to look, find his quote. It may not be good for America, but it's damn good for CBS, Munia said at a Morgan Stanley conference in San Francisco, according to The Hollywood Reporter. Rachel, Rachel Maddow claims have gone through the roof. All of these Democrats looking for some understanding of the new paradigm that said that the person who they wanted to win that election wasn't God's gift to political candidates. We don't understand why she lost. Why did she lose? Why did she lose? Rachel Maddow could tell you. And she will also tell you all of the failings of Donald Trump while giving you the soothing relief that your understanding of the world is not wrong. That Barack Obama was bringing ponies and rainbows. That Hillary Clinton was the second coming. And she was the strongest candidate in the history of candidates. I'm saying that the media, for the most part, has hyped up this narrative or backed up this narrative, at least if you're talking about um, MSNBC. But beyond the part of talking about MSNBC, these guys, for the most part, are making this point that, look, Trump may be bad for America. Oh, but he's great for us. For our bottom line, he is fucking awesome. We have a vested incentive and covering Trump in the way that we do because it puts asses in seats. Did the president work in, with a foreign government or other hack us? Who knows? Who cares? Put asses in seats, so let's cover the story incessantly. The main thrust of this is, you know, the, it, at least what my friend was saying, oh my God, you know, Russia paid all these people to hack us or paid all these people to put all these dirty ads out and all this other stuff. And I'm trying to make the point that they did not have value. Their impact was nil. In study after study, the impact was nil to none. The stuff is obfuscation. The stuff prevents us from talking about the real things that affect this country, whether you want to talk about the political process, whether you want to talk about the voting process, the voting process that gets off on pushing down the number of people who vote because it achieves their political ends, whether you want to talk about Democrats in the primaries or whether you want to talk about Republicans in the general election. I mean, I understand that protecting yourself from foreign government's intrusion is something you should do. That's true. That is true. But when there are a bunch of other things on the list, it becomes comically ridiculous. And it becomes this thing as pure comic fodder as a country. It's, it's just flailing back and forth, trying to find answers when they don't necessarily look at the system itself. Putting another politician in that office is not going to save your life. The problem is the system itself. The problem is both of these parties are problematic. And I'm sorry, this is stupid. I don't, Mueller can do his investigation. But let's be honest and say that it's not, you know, Facebook ads or Twitter ads that took down Hillary Clinton's billion dollar campaign. That's comically ridiculous. It's comically ridiculous. So I put these links at the bottom. You can look at the links yourself. There's more, but I need to go because... I told my wife that, that we can leave at a certain time. Um, and up to this point, she hasn't necessarily bugged me on it. So I'm going to try to keep that. Look, guys, it's, it's one thing to make the point of saying, well, governments interact with other governments, and it's possible that Russia interacted in some way. I don't take this as being the word of God in any cases. I take this as being ambiguous. But even if I give them the benefit of the doubt, the best that you can say is they've done what we do. 
they're horrible bastards, but we're okay with it when we do it because we're doing it for freedom and justice. No, it doesn't work that way. You can't have a bitch fit. You can't be hysterical when you see somebody doing something that you yourself do. And even with the result of being hysterical for this, the question becomes, what do you do about it? What do you do about it? In this case, their impact was nil. Their impact was nil. The, like the argument that these guys, you know, were, were these influential things in it, their impact was nil. So I'm going to leave it at that. Um, the gentleman who helped bring us the 9-11 fairy tale, that's funny, God, no. Wait, so this troll farm was indicted today for Mueller. Yeah, J. Scott, they were. They were. Yes, they were. All right, guys. I'm going to end this because, like I said, we we're supposed to be getting out of here. But take a look at the paper yourself. No, they didn't have impact. Were they from Russia? Were they? Did they come from Vladimir Putin? Who the hell knows? At this point, I don't think Democrats will care. I think they're just going to push this line. So be aware of the studies. No fall for the bullshit on this. All of this is obfuscation. All of this is obfuscation. They don't want to deal with the failings of us. They don't want to deal with the failings of our political system. All of this is obfuscation without talking about us. So I'm going to end it on this. All right, guys, if you enjoy the content, feel free to share, like, subscribe. And of course, you can always support the picture. Thanks, guys.